Santiago de Querétaro, known simply as Querétaro City, or in Spanish Ciudad de Querétaro, is the capital and largest city in the state of Querétaro, located in central Mexico. The area was settled around 200 AD by Mesoamerican groups moving north. And archaeological sites here show Teotihuacan influences. From the classic period, there were two population centers in this area, called Toluquilla and Las Janas. The mound now known as El Cerrito was a ceremonial center, but was later abandoned for unknown reasons. In the later pre-Hispanic period, the area was populated by the Otomi, who had become sedentary urban dwellers and sophisticated politics by the time of the Aztec Empire, who referred to them as the Tlacetili Otomi, or Otomi Nation State. This area was under the control of the Otomi Dominion of Xilotepeque in the 1440s, which in turn was subject to the Aztec Empire of the Mexico Tenochtitlan under the reign of Ahuizotl in the late 15th century. The Aztecs administered the area directly, considering it a bulwark against the Chichimeca lands to the north. The Otomi were the most populous ethnicity in Xilotepec, although there were other groups, primarily Chichimeca as well. These two groups are still found here today. During the pre-Hispanic and colonial times, the Otomi were organized into familial clan-like groups with defined territories, living in stone, wood, or adobe dwellings. They were sedentary farmers who fought but unlike the Aztecs, did not make warfare a large part of the culture. The foundation of the Spanish city of Santiago de Querétaro is pegged to the 25th of July, 1531, when Spaniard Hernán Pérez Bocanegra y Cordoba arrived with the allied Otomi leader Conin, later Hernando de Tapia, who was the administrative head of the Otomi peoples living in Aztec-controlled territory. On this date, the Spanish and their Nahuan allies were battling the local insurgent Otomi and Chichimecas at a hill now known as Sangremal, and which was called Lotepeque and considered sacred in pre-Hispanic times. Chronicles of this event, such as that written by Friar Isidro Félix de Espinoza, state that the Chichimeca were at the point of winning when it suddenly a total eclipse of the sun occurred. This supposedly scared the Chichimeca and the Spanish claim to have even seen an image of Saint James, the patron saint of Spain, riding a white horse carrying a rose-colored cross. This event caused the Chichimeca to surrender. This event is why the city is called Santiago, meaning Saint James de Queretaro. A stone cross imitating the one the Spanish supposedly saw was erected on the hill which later was accompanied by a church and monastery. Spanish dominion, however, grew gradually and was definitely not won through a single battle. In the 1520s, the Otomi and many Chichimeca of what is now southern Querétaro and northern Mexico state allied with Hernán Cortés under the control of the lord of Xilotepeque who still maintained a certain amount of control of the Old Dominion. The first Spanish arrived between 1526 and 1529, headed by Hernán Pérez de Bocanegra, who at first tried non-violent means of subduing the area and founding a Spanish city. However, the initial attempts to establish the city of Querétaro were repelled by the locals, forcing Bocanegra south in establishing the cities of Huimilpan and Acambaro. Boca Negra continued negotiating with the Lord of Xilotepeque, Conin. The Lord's cooperation was gained, for which he was eventually credited for bringing an end to the Spanish Chichimeca slash Otomi conflict, and was made the Spanish governor of the area. However, most of Queretaro's early colonial history was marked by skirmishes between the remaining Chichimeca insurgency and the Spanish authorities, 
with one of the first being over the establishment of encomiendas. Conin separated the indigenous and Spanish residents of the new city, with the indigenous on and around San Germán Hill and the Spanish around the current historic center. The Spanish part of the city was laid out by Juan Sánchez de Alaniz and the indigenous section was laid out in the traditional Otomi manner. The first council convened in 1535 and the settlement was named a Pueblo de Indios, Indian village, in 1537, ending the encomiendas. During this time, the Franciscans arrived for missionary work, who were later joined by the Jesuits, the Augustinians, and others, who built monasteries such as the Monastery of San Francisco and the Monastery of Santa Cruz. The settlement was declared town in 1606, and by 1655, only Spaniards were living in the city. In 1656, it was decreed as the Muy Noble y Leal Ciudad de Santiago de Querétaro, the very noble and loyal city of Santiago de Querétaro. This honor was solicited by Viceroy Luis de Velasco in recognition of Querétaro's growth, agricultural production, industry, and educational institutions. By the 18th century, it was informally known as the Pearl of the Bayo and the third city of the Viceroyalty. Querétaro is considered to be one of the cradles of Mexican independence, and much of the credit is given to Josefa Ortiz de Dominguez. She was the wife of the city's mayor, called a Corregidor, at the beginning of the 19th century. She used her prominent position to gain intelligence for the nascent insurgency. Literary circles called tertulias were a popular pastime for the upper Creole classes, as they also served as a relatively safe place to discuss politics. One such occurred regularly at the house of Jose Maria Sanchez, with the name of the Asociación de Apatistas which became a group dedicated to the independence and winning support to the cause. This association was important for the early organization of those seeking independence for Mexico. However, the most famous of the tertulias was hosted by Josefa Ortiz Dominguez herself at what is now the palace of the Corregidora. Originally, they were open to both Creoles and Spanish-born but after an altercation between Ignacio Allende and the Spaniard Cristomo López y Valdez, only Creoles attended. The tertulias of José Ortiz de Dominguez culminated in the conspiracy of 1810, which was discovered before they had planned to act. On the 13th of September 1810, Epigminio González was arrested for having stockpiled weapons for an insurgency and the next day, Mayor Miguel Dominguez and his wife Josefa were arrested for their roles in the conspiracy of 1810. With the conspiracy discovered, she still managed to get a warning to Miguel Hidalgo. He eluded capture and rushed to Dolores, where he gave his famous grito, the cry for independence. For her actions, La Corregidora was imprisoned several times between 1810 and 1817. She died impoverished and forgotten, but was later remembered when she became the first woman to appear on a Mexican coin. Once the armed battle began, the city was taken by the Royalist Army and was the last major city to be taken by insurgents. After the end of the war, Santiago de Querétaro became the capital of the state of Querétaro in 1823. The state's first constitution was promulgated in the city in 1825. In 1847, it was declared the capital of Mexico when U.S. forces invaded the country. One year later, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in the city, ceding almost half of the Mexico's territory and ending the war. In 1854, another treaty signed here led to the Gaston Purchase, where the United States purchased land that today makes part of southern Arizona and New Mexico. 
adding to the land that they had already gained previously in the Mexico-United States War. In 1867, Maximilian I of Mexico was defeated at the Siege of Queretaro, where the Liberals took him prisoner along with the General Miguel Miramon and Tomas Meya. In May of 1867, the em Emperor was sentenced to death along with Meya and Miramon in the Cerro de las Campañas. Queretaro didn't host any major battles during the Mexican Revolution, but the various factions passed through here given Queretaro's location between the northern states and Mexico City. In 1916, the city was again named the capital of the country due to the Tampico Affair. In 1917, the Constitution Política de los Estados Unidos Mexicanos, the political constitution of the United Mexican States, was promulgated by the Constituent Congress and President Venustiano Carranza. The Constitution still remains the law of the land. Today the city is a strong business and economic center and a vigorous service center that is experiencing an ongoing social and economic revitalization. All this has resulted in high levels of migration from other parts of Mexico. Queretaro has seen outstanding industrial and economic development since the mid-1990s. Queretaro has the second highest GDP per capita among Mexico's metropolitan areas with $20,000 US, after Monterrey. The city is the fastest growing in the country, basing its economy on IT, data centers, logistic services, aircraft manufacturing and maintenance, call centers, the automotive and machinery industries, and the production of chemicals and food products. The region of Queretaro has a rapidly growing wine industry and is now the second largest in Mexico after that of the Baja California region. Major international corporations in the aerospace, electronics, automotive, chemical, food and financial areas have their national headquarters here in Queretaro. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour in history of the city of Queretaro. This will be the final video probably of um, our little retrospective taking footage from when I bicycled through Mexico four years ago and making these full videos out of some of the cities that I hadn't done videos of. Next on the channel, we'll be headed to a different country, so look out for that. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, I've got many more videos of Mexico. Uh, there's some links to some playlists of uh, when I bicycled through Mexico four years ago, as well as my most recent trip traveling through eastern Mexico. You can find the links to those playlists in the description for this video. That time I bicycled through Mexico was part of a larger trip bicycling through Latin America. I've also bicycled through Eastern Africa and Central and Eastern Europe. And I have playlists for all those countries that I've traveled through available on this very same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. Alternatively, if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I've been and all the things that I got to see and do, I have that interactive map available over at my website, followthehumoftheearth.com. Where you can click on the different locations and see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.